Yo, what is up everybody? This is Steven, Bama Saltwater. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. I do just want to say that this video is brought to you by a few of our partners of the channel. Mossy Oak Fishing, I wear their apparel. And there's some promo codes down for you below for them. And then also Dakota Lithium. I have a 36 volt powering this big old trolling motor so we can hold in our spot and actually fish pretty productively. But y'all, that's enough of talking. I'll see you on the water at our fishing spot. We're gonna drop down some cut bait. We're sitting in 300 feet of water and I just have a little double drop rig. It's a barrel swivel with 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, little size, one alt circle hook and a cut piece of cigar minnow. And I come down about a foot and a half, another dropper loop with a circle hook and cigar minnow and six ounce lead. I am throwing this on a Shimano Speedmaster 8 with 40 pound braid and a seven foot conventional bottom rod. Let's drop this down, see if we can catch us some dinner, y'all. It's got a little bit down to coat, 300 feet. Okay, I'm on the bottom now. That took a while. Oh, I'm already getting a bite. I mean, instant. We're hooked up, just like that. That was easy. All right, y'all, here we go. First fish of the day. That is, look at that beeliner, man. Look. <laughs> We have a very tiny bee liner. He has to go back. They have to be 10 inches. Let's let him go. <laughs> he turned his head. Yeah, he did. Wow, he took off. Oh, wow. All right, now he knows he's hooked. That's a good one. Watch it be a grouper. All right, so Malik fought that fish, and uh, I think what happened is he was jigging, the fish ate it, and then this big old shark came up and, and ate that. Oh, I ain't reaching down there, I'll tell you that. I guarantee I ain't. Hey, we caught shark. Hey. When we weren't targeting them, it, that's exactly what happens. Y'all, so we just came out this far and landed a shark. Trying to see what kind it is. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from down here. And it's on mono, man. Yeah, I don't think he has. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Well, at least he got to go away and swim away. I just changed to a knocker rig. So I have a little four ounce weight coming straight to an eight ounce circle hook. Frozen cigar minnow. Let's drop her down. Oh, I just hooked up. Look at this. Is it big? Yeah. Oh. It's dead weight. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead weight, and it's spinning in circles. Ain't no telling what this is going to be. There's some fight from it. <clears throat> this is weird. I, don't, I couldn't tell you what this is. We all know it's a fish. It's just trying to... We like to guess what kind it is first, just for the fun of it. It's a shark, dude. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Smaller shark. It's a baby shark. Well, we're catching a bunch of sharks. This one I could probably, oh my gosh. This one I could probably bring in. Here he is. Oh my gosh, get back, get back, get back. Oh. Get back. So we're more on him. We're gonna get the hook out of it and throw it back. All right, y'all, look at this little shark. I have to get that hook out, then we'll throw him out. But gotta be careful with these things. Oh, dude. Here you go. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Good, Look at him. He's coming back for vengeance, ain't he? Yo, we're gonna take down another one of these cigar minnows. Drop it down. Seems like the sharks have really congregated over here. Hopefully we can kind of bypass them. Oh, there you are. Mm. We're gonna have to hurry up and get them up before you get sharked. <laughs> there are so many sharks. <laughs> Use the high speed reel. Uh oh, I think they're coming after him. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I hope it's a scamp or something. Something we can throw in the box. <sighs> <Damn. sighs> <Whew. laughs> Dang, that'll wear you out. <laughs> there he is. Beeliner. Nice beeliner. These are good ones. Look at that joker. Y'all know that's a target species right there. Malik has one about the same size in the fish box. And then I caught this one. This is a vermilion snapper. They all have to be 10 inches long. This is more than enough keeper. So he's gonna go in the box. What a beautiful fish. Heck yeah. Let's take another cigar minnow. I cut the tail off of them so they don't spin and tangle you up on the way down. Today, there's really hardly any current. So using a four ounce weight, I hook the cigar minnow just like that. And let's drop it down. Oh, something great. No wonder it was just swimming. <laughs> oh, dude, I think. You got a shark. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's a shark. 
Well, I ain't putting this thing in the water. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? No. Mm. Oh my goodness, dude. These things are beasts. Pretty sure this is a shark, but it could be a, could be a guy gripper too. <laughs> you know? Oh, I see. Oh, you see him? Yeah. Sharky. Uh, looks. I don't know. That is a giant amberjack. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. My God. Well, you want to get the bogus because we can't keep them. Heck yeah! Too bad he's out of season. I sat down to start reeling him in. Bro, that's a stud. Y'all check out the size of that amberjack. This is a greater amberjack. Thanks, giant. They get bigger than this, obviously, but that's a nice example of one. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, I can't legally keep them, so he has to go back. So we're gonna let him go, but what a stud. Oh, man, he swam off good and healthy. That was tough. Thought I had a big shark on. Woo! <laughs> I sat down and just used the wave, the swell to get him up. But that was on a frozen cigar minnow. Let's try to hook up another fish. I don't know if y'all can tell, but that amberjack kind of wore me out. <laughs> it was on this beast of a rod. This is a seven foot enamic rod. It's actually a jigging rod. And so it has a lot of parabolic bend without breaking. And then a little Shimano Speedmaster 8. A pretty neat setup. Now it's down on the bottom already getting bit. Look at that rock tip. So he's hooked up now. That didn't take very long at all. I'm gonna bring it up. Hopefully something else we can throw in the cooler. I wish we could have thrown that amberjack in the cooler. There oh. it is. Nice beeliner. Cool. That's a good one right there. That's another keeper. Heck yeah, dude. So instead of dropping a cigar minnow down, I'm gonna take one of these 250 gram Shimano jigs with about 10 feet of 50 pound mono leader. Same setup I was using. That's what I like about this setup. Let's drop this jig down and see what we can catch. I have one, yeah. Had to figure out if it was my jig or if I if I hooked up. Hope I can get it up before the sharks get to it. Oh my god, dude. Ooh, you got something good, huh? Ooh, there's mine. Half of it anyway. Almaco? Oh, Almaco. Nice. Something else for the cooler. Cool. Maybe that's what this is. Probably. There we go. Those don't have any size limits on them either. That's a beautiful little Almaco. Check that out. I decided to drop down that little 250 gram jig and got an Almaco. He can get added to our cooler, our fish box. They don't have any size limits or closed seasons. What a pretty fish. Y'all, that was fun. Let's drop down the same jig again. Woo. Our initial goal was to come out here and troll a lot, but trolling bite, we trolled for what was that? About three hours yeah. with, uh, with no luck. That's just fishing, so we decided to come to a bottom spot while we were out here. It's all natural bottom. There's no way you'd be able to bring up an 18-inch scamp. I just hooked up. I would have hooked. For you? Yeah. Let's hope I can get him up without, what's his name, tax man. <laughs> Coming up and getting it. Beeliner back. <laughs> Another pretty beeliner and Malik just landed one as well. So he's gonna go in the cooler. We're allowed 10 a person. Heck yeah. Y'all, it's gonna be my last drop before we uh, start heading back. That is a beautiful sunset. Kind of hard to beat that view. It is uh, gonna get dark on us and we have about a 40 mile trip back. We had pretty good fun. Yeah, some fun. Cook some. Oh yeah pretty big stuff uh, <laughs> and we we're able to get the cooler full with, with some fish to take home so it's going to get dark on us i'm gonna put the gopro away we'll head home and i'll probably see you tomorrow in the cleaning table and the kitchen y'all so see you in a bit y'all we are back at the house and uh it's the next day they've been on ice all day and we're going to clean our fish check them out it's a very dreary day today so we're going to clean these and head inside but y'all what an amazing selection of fish right here how awesome is that you can't get any fresher instead of flaying them and wasting a bunch of meat we're actually going to cook them whole so I'll show you how to do it with this big old beeliner right there. I think that's a perfect one. It's like our own fish market. There we go. That's a stud of a beeliner right there. You can catch these year round. They're easy to catch. You don't need a bunch of heavy, crazy tackle to catch them. And they're incredibly tasty. 
So I have a sword, seven inch flex fillet. I like a little bit of flex, but I really like a stiff knife for most of this. So like I said, since we're not filleting it, the first thing I need to do is scale it. Use a descaler, you can use a spoon. I like a tool that's one size fit all. So I just take the back of the knife and it works just fine. Some people suggest pressure washers, but I feel like by the time I get my pressure washer hooked up, I could already scale haul my fish. <laughs> so we're gonna scale these. If you want a stiffer knife, you can get the serrated one. Use that to scale. You wanna make sure you get around that head, up around these fins. So I'm gonna scale this whole thing, spray it off, and I'll show you what else I use. Guess what, we removed all the scales, now it's time to spray it down. Clean all these scales up. If you've ever scaled fish before, you know you'll be finding them all over yourself. You'll find them on your back, under your forearm. They go everywhere. There we go. We sprayed it down and got all the scales off of us. It's time to fill dress our fish and get it ready to cook whole. This is incredibly easy. It may intimidate some people eating fish with the head on, but man, you don't miss any meat at all when you do that and it soaks up all the flavor from that carcass and the head and everything else. It's good. Make a shallow cut into their gut so you don't pierce all those guts in there and we're gonna remove them. Oh, wow, he had a piece of that cigar minnow. Huh, check that out. That's what our bait of choice was yesterday was those cigar minnows. So that's kind of cool. We're gonna remove all these here and I like to remove the gills as well. A few times, it'll pull everything out with it. Just wanna be careful, the gill rakes can be kinda pokey. So once you remove the majority of their innards, I'm gonna spray that down again, remove the eyeballs, and then get it ready to cook. Let's remove these eyes. Some people like to eat the eyes. If that's you, you can leave them in to each their own. I don't eat them. It's got a big old eyeball crazy looking ain't it check that out now i've shown this a couple times on the channel but inside there's this pearl looking lens i want to see if i can take it out and show you up close it may look nasty but check out that lens so there's the fish lens that came out from its eye it's kind of what gives them like a fish eye view see if it'll focus check that out see through there pretty cool looking through that but that's what's inside the actual fish's eyes that marble looking shape i just find that interesting to say the least hey guess what that was pretty cool seeing that fish eye but now our fish is ready to be cooked pretty much there's one more step i like to do before we season it and that score it and all this allows is it to cook a little bit more even and also those flavors to get down into the meat just do a little cross hatches that's what i like to do on both sides and we'll take that upstairs dry it off and get ready to season it and cook it y'all that is dinner we are in the kitchen it is time to marinate our fish it's going to go in the fridge for an hour after we finish this marinade before we cook it so i have my bee liner clean scored and dried now what i have here is going to sound complicated it's really not but check this out these are chopped up curry leaves fresh curry leaves look at that ginger garlic paste this is a teaspoon of turmeric powder teaspoon of chili powder teaspoon of salt have some red pepper flakes that's about a teaspoon this some freshly sliced green chili and freshly sliced ginger look at that along with a couple teaspoons of fresh olive oil now we're gonna mix this marinade together take our ingredients all in a bowl these ingredients smell so good Oh my goodness, they're very strong and powerful ingredients and spices on their own, but when put together, they make such a nice, practically a masala. So let's get all these dumped in here. Okay, those are all our dry ingredients. Time to add our oil. Now I'm gonna mix this together and mush it together, and that's gonna be an awesome marinade that smells amazing. Look at the different colors. Isn't that cool? How many different colors? And it's all from scratch. All natural stuff. All spices. I'm going to squeeze one little lemon wedge in it. We'll get that seed out. Don't y'all worry. <laughs> and finish mixing that together. It's going to be kind of a thicker marinade. 
more like a chutney, like a ginger garlic chili chutney. So now our paste is ready. A little bit of salt. But it's time to add our paste. This is where you don't want to be afraid to get kind of messy or get your hands dirty. You want it to rub it in, in between all the crevices that we cut, the scoring, because that's where the flavor is going to come from. Otherwise, it's just going to be a really bland fried fish. But these are going to give some nice flavor on that skin and marinate into that meat. So get all that in there. Scoop up all, a lot of that excess and get some inside of the stomach cavity there. Man, this is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Oh, yeah, y'all. Now we're gonna cover our fish and put it in the fridge for one hour to let it marinate and get all this delicious seasoning and spices and everything absorbed into that meat. We just pulled our fish out of the fridge. We have our oil heating up. It's gonna be shallow frying. Shouldn't take too long. It's a fairly thick fish, but it's not super big. Oh, man, that just, I can't get over how well those ingredients pair together. First thing I want to do though is just kind of flavor our oil. We'll have some of these fresh curry leaves we're going to throw in there. I think our oil's ready. Let's put our fish in. Open we'll up. Call the fire department. So we have our fish in there best we can. It's about the biggest pan I own here. What we can do is baste some of that oil on top of it and let it cook through there. But you can tell it's hot, it's steaming. So it already smells good. Bring down the temp just a bit because we don't want to burn our masala mix. And let that cook for a few minutes and we'll flip it. Typically, I like the fried fish tail, but I need to get this in the pan so that head can cook. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that side right there. Heck yeah. Now I have some julienne ginger. That just means kind of thinly sliced ginger. And that's fresh for all ginger that we're gonna throw in there. If I say ginger one more time, take a shot. <laughs> and some julienne green chili peppers. This gives an added aroma, a little bit more flavor on there. That turmeric's pretty strong spice. So you want to kind of balance everything out. Gonna let that finish cooking. Like I mentioned, I want to do this outside in my big pot. If you've watched the channel before, you've seen me fry whole fish. But I'm making do with what we got. That wind is terrible coming off the water. There's no way I can get that flame going. So this is going to be good either way. But it is time to plate. So I just have some paper towels laying down. I want to flip it over make sure that side's cooked. Oh yeah, that's cooked. Nice. Check that out, the fins are crispy. The aroma right now in the kitchen is absolutely astonishing. It smells so good. All the spices together with that fresh bee liner, which is a snapper. All snappers taste good to me. Let's get ready to eat it, y'all. So you could eat it like this. I removed the paper towels. That fin's nice and crispy. But just to touch it up a little bit, I have some freshly chopped onion and a couple of lemon slices. Just raw onion to each their own, and then a few of these slices of lemon. Mm. That right there is a pretty plate of food. Here's our freshly cooked masala fish. I cannot wait to try a bite. Let me grab a fork and we're gonna munch down. So thank you Lord for putting this fish there for this beautiful food. Let's go ahead and give a nice bite. I have to go in for that head meat just because that's probably my favorite bite of the fish. Here we go. Hmm. That is delectable. Wow. How tasty is that? That is awesome. The only way I can describe this to you, it's a very flaky and white meat. It's not over seasoned, even though it may seem like we added a bunch of seasoning on there, but it's got a nice salty, spicy mix. And that lemon and the curry kind of balances everything together and brings it all together. Let's get another bite. Hmm. Now I want to get some of that crispy skin because that's what has mainly all the seasoning on it. I'm going to take a onion and that's a money bite, y'all. Here you go. Look at that. Mm. Wish you were here to try this, 
But all I can do is take another bite to show you how good it tastes. Mmm. It's still hot. But that fish skin is perfect. Mmm. I'm glad you were able to join us from the boat to the filet table and then to the kitchen. And man, what an awesome finished product. If you enjoyed this content, go smash that subscribe button. Channel is constantly growing and I love sharing these videos with each and every one of y'all. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.